your last name so why don't you just give us your name okay <laughs> Christine Anderson yes that's me this, I'm, I'm Aza Manukova we are looking at our whole world picture right now everything's unveiling it's all unraveling and one of the hardest things for any person to look at is what we could generalize say the sex trade the abuse of children pedophilia all of that gets conglomerated into that we uh, in many places probably right under our noses sometimes children women and young boys are being taken into the trade and their lives are being bartered for sex. And you, this is why I wanna bring this up because I have never met anybody. Uh, we all know, a lot of people I know know about it. Um, may, many of my friends actually have been exposed to it in their own childhoods. However, you worked there. You worked, so while you tell us when you started uh, doing your therapist. Yeah, I've been working, um, counseling people for over 30 years and uh, I worked a long time in Asia in Thailand and mainly in Thailand and Philippines about how children are being um, either kidnapped or just just uh, you know the parents think they're going to work as maids or something like that from the countryside and they're used in these pedophiles, uh, snuff shows and so I worked with these children and uh, what I do is the most important thing that people need to do is deal with themselves and deal, look at their own shadow and get rid of all of your pain that creates reaction you know in, in the world and uh, so that's what I was working with these children. I got them to clear emotional pain, which is, I mean, Jesus, you know, the prophet Jesus, not the religion, the prophet said, um, I will tie a, a, a millstone to your ankles and throw you to the deepest, darkest place in, in, in the ocean. That's what Jesus said about pedophilia, you know, about disturbing a child sexually, a little child that's not developed. And, you know, like he spoke in metaphors. So what does that mean about your soul, the deepest, darkest place of the ocean, you know, meaning the, your emotional body, you know? I mean, it's horrific, it's horrific. When a therapist works with a with somebody that's been molested as a child and they hit that pain there's a scream that comes out that is blood curdling it's like you know the soul has escaped out of out of that person's body you know the the uh, native people do soul retrievals mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. every every name people that live with nature do soul retrieval where they bring, call the soul back into the body. You know, like the child can't stay there. You can't. No, you can't. It, yeah, and that scream, that blood curdling scream, how many times I've heard it, I'm still like, oh, oh, you know, it's unbearable. So to be, yeah, so these children that, that have been victims of um, being sexually tortured, it's a torture. 
It's a horrific thing. It's just a horrific thing. Yes, yeah, so I worked with them for many years, and then I couldn't work anymore because I started to, you know, it was so, like... Yeah, how did you handle it yourself? What did you do during that time? Because, I mean, I can speak with an empathic uh, voice with you because of my own soul retrieval process, because of working with other people that had been molested sexually and mind-controlled. You know, and it is. It's like the soul can't stay in the pain. No, it can't. No. And so it will eject itself out of the body, but the body still holds all the pain. Yeah. The body yeah. still has all the yeah. memory, so when the soul or the yeah. consciousness comes back yeah. in. Yeah. And so... That's why so many people forget. They, they just forget. Right. But there's the symptom, but they forgot. Or they remember what happened, but they don't relate to it emotionally because they can't. They've, they've split away from right. themselves. So how did you... Because, to see, I have a lot of friends, okay? work with people all over the world and they're all looking at this subject right now. I mean, it's the one that most people will turn their back on because it is, if you really start to feel, not think, feel what is being done to our children, okay? This is yeah. torture. Yeah. So how did you deal with that pain yourself? What did you, I mean, 25 years is a long time to be working in that field. Uh, how did I, I deal with it? I just prayed, mm -hmm. you know. I just prayed to the universe to hold me, you know. It was, um, I'm not religious, but, but yes, I, I, I'm spirit and, and the almighty, whatever that means, I don't even know. But just to hold me, you know, the spirit of life, mm -hmm. to be able to... Um, go through this with these children, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, it's... How prevalent is it? What uh, are we talking about? Are we talking about a pocket full of, you know, bad people uh, on the planet that are doing this? How prevalent is it? In your experience, I mean, when you started... To I started, I started hallucinating that it was such a high percentage because I started seeing it's like this ordinary nice person here and in the night he's raping children, you know? Right. I mean, it's... I don't know. I don't know the percentage, but... Um, I don't know. I don't know what the well, percentage is. Well, I mean, I'm is. asking the question because I don't think anybody does. I really don't think anybody does, but I too, having done the work I've done, have started to even have these moments where I think it's 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 more than 50 percent. I mean, it, it's so prevalent. It's such an underlying aspect of all the fear and all the trauma on the planet. And you started out by talking about the shadow, right? So when you have a traumatized person that's all this pain, they're actually in pain still. And so, I mean, there's something deeply, not just horrifically humanly wrong with this, but there's something else happening here. I mean, something so, I mean, if you talk about uh, uh, <clears throat> satanic ritual abuse of children, we talked about that today. Um, I don't mind, I mean, we're friends, we're normal ladies, we're sitting here at a table in central Mexico and we're talking about these things and our, our conversation today was most people don't want the intensity? Was that the word you used? I mean... Yeah, because it's frightening. I understand. Most people just go, no, 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 no. Be you know, it's too much. It's too much. And I understand that. So there had to be an aspect of you that was able to process all that pain as a therapist. I mean, there must have been something happening. You said, like, you just kept asking the universe to keep clearing it out yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just kept asking to, to, to be held. Mm -hmm. energetically in in the universe you know um, that's it that's all I knew how to do mm -hmm. and it it happened okay so we're talking I mean this is kind of I think when let's say the Western world when we think about the sex trade we tend to look at the Orient if we've looked at it at all right it's we know that in the Philippines and the Thailand this goes on a lot of the time right but we don't turn around and look in our own backyard well the people that are that are you know, molesting these children are Western people mostly. Okay, so let's talk about the perpetrator. How, did you ever work with them or did you come across them, confront them? Uh, yeah, I did, I did. And um, I started doing research because I was told that, you know, these people that molest children were molested as children. No, 
no, no, no, no, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. Yeah, there's a very small percentage, but that's not true. There's some sort of a, a castration, retardation in these males that they can't, um, you know, they, they can't stand in their man manliness, you know. They've been castrated. And especially in the industrial world, mm -hmm. you know, they, they've been enslaved in the system, they have been valuing themselves externally and nothing has grown inside, you know, there's no, there's no inner work done, they haven't looked at their own shadow, they haven't looked at their own emotional baggage and, you know, and they're dumping it externally onto children, onto women, onto gays, onto whoever, you know. So these are like, you know, paid sex tours, right? I mean, they pay a lot of money to go to Thailand. They pay a lot of money to go into uh, the Philippines. And so they're, because there's no real power here, they're yeah, the, taking power. Castrated, over. castrated. Yeah. A, a man that needs to fuck a little child while the child's in terror, screaming and in agony, you know, that type of man, what type of man can have an erection and do that to a little child's body that's not formed yet, you know? What type of man, only a castrated person that, and I mean castrated from their own soul, from their own heart, from their, they have no inner life at all. Their whole value is external. They have, they have prostituted themselves to a system you know, where they're lost. That type of person can do that to a little terrified child that's screaming in pain. Wow. You know, and get pleasure from it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, for sure. So, yeah. uh, and when we're looking at, I mean, I guess it goes through all social economic classes from many different... Oh, yeah, totally, totally, totally. It, 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 yeah, yeah, it's there's not, no, it's not a class thing at all. Right. It's a castrated thing. Right. And, and he had a secret night camera mm -hmm. and he filmed a snuff show of killing a child, raping and killing a child on stage. And he said that um, the people that were there, number one, it cost $10,000 to, the, the, to get in. So you have to have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And he's, he was saying that um, doctors, lawyers, politicians, you know, they were the clientele. Right. You know, the children that I was working with, they didn't know who those people were that were raping them. No. What were the age groups that you worked with? Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, sixteen. Right. So young, from young to early teens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Adults? No. No. Okay. So this is a child sex. They have innocent people. And they're, innocent people. They're okay. innocent people. They they didn't know. You know. They they that people come there and they believe them. Mm -hmm. They don't know. They've never. They're fishermen. You know. They're they're farmers. They grow rice or whatever they they're innocent people right and so you could say that thing about anywhere when we say innocent you know we're conditioned also to think socioeconomically you know poverty or suppression but we're talking about innocence and, and innocence and, yeah and it's true because here in mexico the widespread of the people there's a lot of innocence here they're like children they don't have the education or the background or so yeah, you know even i mean they have a different type of intelligence mm -hmm. they have an intuitive perceptive intelligence and these are people that are connected to their heart intelligence you mm -hmm. know so so they they don't that's not in their level of thinking it's like the, it's that type of thing they've never been you know in these villages the children run around naked you see granny's titties, you know, they just wear wraps or something like that. The human body is the human body. It's not some twisted perversion going on in their brains. So they don't, they didn't realize. Mm -hmm. Of course.
Right. I mean, yeah, right. so they have a different type of intelligence, a natural intelligence of life, of spirit, you know, the spirit of the trees, the spirit of the earth, the, the spirit of life, you know. So, so it's not, a, a, it's not a, a, a rational, developed mind. It's a, it's a developed spirit. It's a hard intelligence, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, thank you for sharing that because, you know, every time we look at the the larger picture because we're talking about what you experience but there's a larger picture and it's permeated all of our earth right now and i think that's the key element is that from the very we can go back in time we can go to present time we can bring even standing rock into it you know when there was an indigenous group of people that were heart-centered earth-centered the celts the ancient right, nordic white, right. white tribes which yeah. were all of these beings growing up on this earth did not have the ability or they didn't have the experience with the the predator let's just go these people are predatory yeah they're the predators pre right 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 so you know you can see that this is a problem that's so widespread right now because we haven't dealt with it how are we going to deal with and, it and also looking at those people they they look down at mm -hmm. you know they look down at their ignorant their their peasants or their low class or whatever you know that because they they have lost the connection with their own heart their own spirit so they don't recognize that these people have that connection mm -hmm. so and they don't have a sophisticated developed mind dialogue so then they must be stupid you know I want to underline and, that. and That's so important. Wait, that they lost their own heart. So really, yes. what they're trying to do is get it out of something else, and they have no. They don't even know they're actually doing that. They're looking for what they lost, and then instead of like revering it and nurturing it, they are. They want to kill it because they don't have it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. 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 it's a different. It's a, it's a different type of intelligence. There's the, the intelligence of your heart, of your soul, and there's the intelligence of a sophisticated, well-educated mind. Different vibration, totally different okay. vibration, different world. You see the world in a totally different way. Okay. I've never met one of these nature people that are on antidepressants, anti-anxiety. You know, I've never met them. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they, they get their nurturing from nature. And um, in the Western world, what a high percentage of people are on anti-something, you know, mm -hmm. medication. Right. Which castrates them from themselves even more. Of course. It's, a, it's actually, it's soul harvesting. I mean, look, it's soul harvesting. I mean, the souls are being taken out of these beings. The soul energy, the soul that light or that inner part of ourselves is, is actually being harvested either through drug abuse or we could go into in many, many subjects. I want to ask you something because when you shared with me um, the other day when we were just talking, because we're just going to switch it around right now. Okay, these, you can't even call them people sometimes, I have a hard time calling them people these uh, people that have lost their own connection to their own heart, these people that are so empty that you could almost say they're soulless. You took some of those people into therapy. Oh, yeah. Okay. And yeah. I... A lot. A hell of a lot. Okay, so yeah. did they come to you? Did they get unhappy? Yeah, um, when, when they're at the end of their rope, you know, they just don't know what to do anymore. You know, they can't get out of bed. Nothing... Nothing, you know, makes them, uh, gives them joy anymore. Okay, so no matter how many sexual encounters they have, no matter how many, if they're slaughtering children, you know, uh, you know, so they're down there at the bottom, right? I know some go down there and they don't ask for help. So these ones come to you and they ask for help. So that gives you permission. Could you relate, again, what you related to me? Do you do this in private or are there usually people watching? Um, I either do seminars or one-on-one. One-on-one, -on -one. One -on -one. okay. Um, Asa shared with me the other day, it's something I innately understand because I've been in contact with those that are soulless or in the process or at the final edges of losing their soul, right? So they're going down, down deeper, down deeper into that deep part black of themselves, hole. that black hole it's within a black themselves. Hole. 
I don't know what soulless means, you know, I can, uh, but, but going into this black hole of nothingness, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there's a, uh, yeah, the black hole of nothingness where nothing turns them on, no matter how much stimulation they get, you know, no matter what, you know, the, the, it doesn't do it anymore, how many, how many of anything and parading and, and wanking and whatever, nothing does it anymore. Uh -huh. And then it's like, zhoo, into this nothingness you, you, that consumes them. Okay. And either they, they die of some strange disease or they, they commit suicide in some way or another, or they come to therapy, you know, and I've worked with a lot of these people in therapy. And I see them also as victims because from childhood they've been socialized to split away, split away, split away, split away. You know, don't feel your own feelings. Look at how you should be, you know, and, and act that way mm -hmm. to the point where they, they just don't have that connection anymore, you know. So that's also a, a soul retrieval, right. the same thing. Could you describe, you described to me a, a therapeutic uh, session you had with one man. You said there were other people was in a group. Uh, the reason I want this to be heard, all right, because it's something that I understand. When a person is at that place, okay, they're at that empty, vacant, vast place. Depression. Isn't that the, the now thing that's going on on planet Earth? Depression? Depression. Okay, beautiful. As okay. opposed to expression of your own being? So, what's necessary? What's a Mer process? Killing, 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 killing. No, your, your, your therapeutic process for you. Okay, killing. Okay, so please tell me that story. As you told me, you were sitting in a room with some other people were in the room and you had one man and the way you said it to me, okay, and I'll, do you remember? Well, I I, you which actually one? Said, <laughs> I know, she said it this way. Look, I mean, you said, I reach in and I rip his heart out. Okay, now this sounds very drastic to most people, and I know a lot of people that do therapy, but what happens, okay? What happens in that session? How they attack you, they come after you, do they resist you? Well, there's, there's a part, of course it's shaming, and then the ego doesn't want to let go and doesn't want to die, because who am I without my ego identity, you know? That's all that's grown in me, my ego identity. So you're going to take that away from me, you know? Then what? Then who am I? Where's my value? You know, how do I stand in the world? So it's very, very... Um, uh, there's that battle between light and dark within the person, mm -hmm. you know? And, and for me, uh, uh, my seeing is to rip that out of the person. Mm -hmm. With their, their, in therapy, they give me permission. Right, well, of course, that's what I wanted to make that very yeah. clear. This yeah. Is, yeah. It has to yeah. come with the permission or the yeah. asking of the person itself to yeah. do that right. And, and it's a death, it's a death where they end up killing their own ego, mm -hmm. right. you know? So it feels like their heart's being ripped out because they haven't felt it for so long that, and I know that's what you meant, but it's, it's we, we were saying it's like a ruthless love. It's like you as a therapist. Well, I'm you, confronting the... But how do you the, confront the, it? Because I've confronted it in real life and it comes back at you really heavy. Yeah, but I don't take any notice of it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because I see what it is, uh -huh. you know, it's some sort of demonic possession of, you know, that's been like implanted in the person or something, you know, from society, from false values, from lies, basically, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's the soul screaming for life, mm -hmm. you know, so, so that's what I'm seeing. And, and they're giving me permission, even though they're fighting me, they're not leaving, they're not get, leaving the room, they're mm -hmm. still there. So, so, you know, it's like an exorcism. It is an exorcism. Okay. It's a shamanic journey, okay. you know, into hell. Mm -hmm. 
and and there's this ripping away where the person just goes once they they see what's what's been taking their life and they allow it to leave you know they go into fetus and there's this crying and crying and crying you know and and actually they themselves it's a death and rebirth every single culture has ha, has ritual of killing and what are you killing you're killing your own shadow you're killing all of the the things that came to you not from you that's what you're killing and every culture has the killing, 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 you know. And then once that's dead, because the killing, who, who is killing? This, the, your force, your will will be done, Jesus and all the other people say. Your will will be done. So that part of you that will be done is killing what came to you, not from you. And and then, you know, there's the there's the the letting go of that you know the the death of that and then they this this coming back to to the birth of yourself you know it's a it's a rebirth mm -hmm. you start to you know feel it's like remember buddha said remember the face you were before you were born that's the essence of who you are remember that so that remembering and you know we come back to ourselves so quickly and so easily you know it takes a very long time to get sick and it takes a short time to get well because that's our nature because our spirit is constantly going towards wholeness you know um carl jung said there's the spirit of alcohol why do you think they call it the al uh, the spirit vodka tequila rum and whiskey and that they're spirits. You either get high on the spirit of alcohol or you get high on your own spirit, you know? And getting high is our nature. It's in our DNA because that's evolution. We're moving from do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti. We're going up the scale. It's our nature, that's why we're here. And going towards enlightenment, meaning waking up, is our nature, it's in who we are as a soul. So this density is moving away from the truth of yourself and that's pain. It's pain. It's suffering. It's, it's stupid suffering. You know, unnecessary stupid suffering. Well, it's so vital that we have this conversation and, <clears throat> and share it because, you know, they say the way out is through the gates of hell. You know, and so the ego will do everything it can to keep itself installed and it depends on where you are in a life if you were like this uh, people that you've worked with you're talking about you know I separate the ego from from the the um, uh, false input that has been inputted right you know that the ego has arranged you take all of that out all you vomit out all of the negativity, you know, you're stupid, you shouldn't do that, you mustn't do that, wrong, bad, bad, wrong. You get all of that vibration out of you and then there's the pure ego, you know. Look, aren't I pretty, you know? Look at me, I, I'm in, I can do this and I can do that. You know, there's the pure ego, which is a part of who we are, you know. Which can be a well. This is why we're here. I mean, we're dressed in that. We have a. We have a. Our essence is right here, showing through this. If we didn't have that ego or that identity that we're presenting, you know, here, then we would be all back in the nothingness. So I am totally with you on that. You know, as long as we're alive, you know, the ego belongs to time because it can be yeah. observed. Whatever is observable dies. You know, I can observe my body, I can observe my emotions, I can observe my mind, I can observe my, my, my ego. So that means whatever's observing it is who I am. Whatever is observing that can't be observed is who I am. And, and what is observable belongs to time. So everything that belongs to time that I'm journeying in that will die is for my soul's evolution. 
couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> I mean, just the force of what you speak about, because you're speaking from inner gnosis. You know this. This is not book learning. This is not. This is a process that you've gone through in your own soul evolution here to come to gnosis, knowing. You know this. It's not. I'm. You know. She's not teaching. She's knowing. She's sharing. You know, there's a very big differentiation between those things. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, before, I will keep this short, all right? Um, I know a lot of people get stuck, okay? Like, what can I do? Well, if you said it in the beginning, what we're seeing out there on the world stage is a collective shadow. It's okay. A, okay. So, how does a person... Start. Either outwardly or inwardly. There's always okay. both, right? Okay. You know, so how does okay. a person start to deal with this because we're going down deep in the shadow here, okay? Okay, so the way you can start first is get a photo of yourself when you were one, two, three, four, five years old and deeply have a look at the eyes of that child because that's who you are. Have a look at that. Like really meditate on, on the, that photo of, of yourself and then get a mirror and have a look at, like really, really seriously, have a look into your own eyes now and talk to yourself, you know? This is the child that you, you are, is still there, and, and this is where you come to now. And really deeply have a look. And then make a commitment to yourself, to the child, that you will remove this programming you know, that, that's come to you, not from you. And make a commitment to your own soul. Hello, gods and goddesses, Jesus, Allah, Buddha, whatever, you know. Absolute everything, universe, help. Help me. I'm making a commitment to my own soul that this is the end of this game, this programming using me. That's it. Just do that 100%. And if you don't feel it 100%, do it, do it again, and do it again, and do it again, and do it again, until you feel it 100%. And let me tell you, the universe will order itself where you will, you will get help, because we need help. We can't yeah, we do it, I help, need I mean, help. I can't do, it, you know, my own process myself, well, no. It's so beautiful because the thing that happens when you go through Whatever process that is, and that's a beautiful one, because most people miss the child. Most people miss the child. That's why all the children are missing. People miss their child. So why do we have all these children missing in our world? Because we've missed it. So I, I love that. I mean, I would just, it vibrates with me. But whatever process we've come to, what's on the other side is that you realize that with all of that intact, as, as integrated as you can get, the effect you have on the larger world mm -hmm. consciousness, mm -hmm. it is very expansive. So you're not locked into, I was locked into for years. I should be in India helping the poor people. Oh my God, I should be over here doing this. Should, should be. I know. Don't shoot on yourself. <laughs> right? You know, and so then you just, you're now you know your essence. This is, we were, I was talking with others about this today. It's like you recognize yourself. This is me. This is my essence. This is, and uh, you know, we, many of us share the same essence, but we each have a tone, we each have a, a resonance. Another thing you can do is um, go out into the countryside somewhere, with friends is good as well as, as by yourself, and start chanting your own name. And feel it, feel the vibration, feel the sacred geometry the, of your own name, because that's a very, very interesting, call your own spirit back, feel your own vibration. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard, it's hard, but your will will be done, and it doesn't take long also, it doesn't take long. Mm -hmm. It's one step, it's one drop in the bucket. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't take long. It doesn't, it doesn't, when you really fully commit, that's I think the key, it's like when you 100%, Thy will, my will, will be done yeah. because I am the will of me. This is me, and it does take that. It's not that hard to get to, though. No, it really isn't. I mean, it's a removal of all the bullshit and everything else. Sit with yourself. Sit with yourself. 
sit with nature, sit with yourself, look at me, look at her, right? I mean, we are now entering into a time when we can just actually transmit by being with each other, by touching with each other. So I really thank you for this. I mean, you moved me, and I like people that move me, and I like intensity, and your passion is, I honor it, because that's when your, your actual energy body, you're, you're like a fountain. You're like a fountain. <laughs> you're not even a drop anymore, you're a fountain. <laughs> There you go. True spoken, darling. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes. No less. <laughs> I'm going to give you a hug. Like <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I think, I hope we have more um, talks. Uh, we keep hitting um, some pretty interesting material we've been sharing. So thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you want to say anything else? That I... um, yeah, one more thing that I want to say. Uh, I did this, I, I always work on myself um, because I, I'm a growth groupie. <laughs> but um, when I got rid of major, major uh, hallucinations and, and you know, uh, imaginations, negative imaginations about myself, I wake up in the morning and I really love to be alive. I really love to be alive. And I really love more and more who I am. I'm excited about me. I'm excited about me. I can't look at myself and criticize myself anymore. I used to be total criticism. I, I can't anymore. I don't see anything negative. I see ignorance. And, and a constant evolution, but I don't have any hate towards myself anymore, and I love to be alive. That's, that's the product, and it's easy. It's easy. Do it, because... And it's it, magical, and it, it's It doesn't take long, you know? People think, oh, no, 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 no. Yes. Not at all. That's crap. That's a lie. It's an installed yeah, it's lie. A lie. You know, it's you're going to have lie. to go to your psychiatrist for the yeah. next 30 years and pay yeah. him $400 a session. Same programming. Okay. Yeah. So we're talking people to people. Yeah. Direct yeah. to direct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel like we're also at another octave in our collective consciousness right now. So messages go faster. So exactly. Make, and so healing goes faster it too. It does too. It's like that. And what you say is yeah. true. What it might have taken when they were programmed yeah. to the past, we're always programmed to the past. Yeah. So yeah. what might have taken... In the 1800s yeah. maybe, you know, with Freud or something, but not now. No. No, not at all. Exercise your will. I love it. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Great. <laughs> Chocolate.